Okay, let's take a look at Carlos Pena during that 2009 campaign. And during this period, he had a hard hit ball rate of 369 with a batting average of only 269. He hit a homer every eight and a half at bats. So this was the period that was the hottest time in his career. And one of the things that we were working on was trying to get to a point where the timing was as perfect as we could make it because of a superior thought process as far as how to get prepared for that. But the other, the other part of it was how to get in line because we knew that when he's creating a line that looks like this, when he's in that line of the pitch, then his miss hits are going to happen about 40% up about 40% down and only about actually about 1% that happens like this <laughs> that's exactly in that line but we we know for sure that 40% of the balls that he hits are going to end up below center that's just the way it goes when you hit two round things so even though this is the result of this one it's not what we actually want. That's the weirdest thing about this whole thing. That's another reason for the name, hitting is a guess. So if we look at this, this ball was hit about as good as you can hit it. This is a Verlander 94 fastball, outer third of the plate, and he crushed this. They weren't talking about exit velocities at that time, but he and I were because that was our entire goal, was to focus 100% of our timing and making the best move possible. In other words, 100, 100. So let's take a look at that. This kind of illustrates, this top view is really cool, kind of shows that that pitch is definitely outer third, right almost on the black. And yet, this is a ball that he easily pulls. And he pulls it because that's just the nature of his process. So keeping the ball away to guys thinking that they have to go oppo is it just a, that's a case by case thing completely and it is not a general general thing that you can say is is a rule that works but let's look at that one from the side because this one illustrates the point pretty well again this one is one of those ones that's in that two percent it's really close to exactly perfect in line the the ball's coming down again the barrel is in line with it and he just misses it now we know what happens he missed 13 of these in a month that ended up going up above but when the swing line looks like that then the miss hit looks like that but the perfect hit looks like this and the perfect hit is something that we know is very rare it's not going to happen all that often so even though that's the goal it's really not really the goal is all of these misses so if we want to talk about hitting as a guess, make no mistake, hitting is most definitely a guess. But when your guesses get better, this is one that he mishits a little bit, but it's, it's a bomb. That's part of the plan. The plan was to mishit. The plan was not to hit everything perfect and hit exact line drives all the time. Nobody and trust me when I say nobody is that good. It just goes against the nature of hitting two round things. But when you're in line more often, you're going to have contact that is way, way, way more in, in your control. You can, you can control the path, the general cone that you keep the ball in. But if your focus is to try to swing up, to try to hit the perfect ball, then you're going to still hit 40% up. But now when you miss underneath, the pop-ups aren't nearly as effective. The exit speed goes way down. These exit speeds of the toppers that you're inevitably going to hit are going to go way down. So it's not about swinging up. The only reason that that's working for any of these players is because we're at a record number of pitches at the bottom of the strike zone and if that's going down and this is going up we have a lot of happy accidents